My dear friends, I thank you for inviting me into your consciousness, and it's my great pleasure to offer you the third installment of the Six Sacred Steps. I am Adamu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization, and I'm speaking to you now through Zingdad. It's important for me to begin each of these conversations by advising all those who are hearing from me for the first time, and all those who do not have a clear memory of the previous parts of this conversation, to please stop here. Please view the whole Adamu Speaks video collection in sequence. Each most certainly does build on from the last, and you will gain little to no value in simply picking it up from here. You can find the entire Adamu Speaks video collection conveniently laid out in order, together with their text transcripts, on Zingdad's website. With those preliminaries behind us, we can begin our discussion on the third sacred step, action. Action is the heart of the six sacred steps, perhaps arguably even the most important step. It's such an important step that it is sometimes even called the law of action because there is a universal truth tied up with action. So let me begin by telling you about that. The law of action is as follows. What you do to life will be done to you by life. Perhaps you've heard this expressed slightly differently. Perhaps you've heard it said, what you do to others will be done to you also. I'm sure you must have heard this because the law of action is so pervasively true that it has found its way into every single religion and major philosophical system in the world today. It's been called the golden rule and also the law of reciprocity. And today I can tell you, in case you didn't know this, it is also the law of karma. Most of those that believe in karma actually misunderstand it somewhat. They seem to believe that there is some kind of a universal vengeance system, as if there is some deity that meets out punishment to the wicked, as if a life of hardship and torment is burdened upon you by some cruel being in retribution for past sins. Well, beloved friend, allow me to tell you there is no such thing. It's simply that what you express into life is multiplied by universal will and then returned to you. Oh wait, is that not the law of attraction as shared with you when we were last discussing intention? Of course it is, because all of these things are the same thing. The law of action is the law of karma, which is the law of attraction, which is the golden rule, which is the law of reciprocity. These are all the same thing. But there are some components of these laws that are often poorly understood. The first component is the action itself, the thing that you are doing. The energy or intent behind your action is what fuels your action. If you genuinely desire to do a kind act for another being, and then you go out and do something, then it is kindness that you are enacting. It is kindness that you are putting out into the world. It doesn't matter if the actual action is making a sandwich for a hungry stranger, or if it is offering a friend a compassionate ear. What you are doing, then, is kindness. So that's the first component. The action carries out into the world around you the energy of the intention that is behind it. And just as with kindness, an underhanded, sneaky, uncaring intention can be carried out into the world by, for example, trying to enrich yourself at the expense of your neighbor. And here I use this word neighbor in the spiritual sense. Those that are around you. Your neighbor is um, other people, it's also the planet, it's also the animals, the plants, the oceans, the air, and so forth. Which brings me to the second component of the law of action. You might think you are being kind to this person right here to whom you are offering a sandwich. 
And it is true, you are. But when you act, you act upon the whole of life. A loving action done to any part of life affects all of life. Because all is one, remember. And the reverse is true. A negative destruction action perpetrated upon any part of life affects all of life. So, you really do need to think about what your intention is before you act. You are impacting the oneness, not just the person, the neighbor, upon whom you are acting. Then there is the third component. This is perhaps the very least understood component. It's often not even mentioned when this law of action is discussed. It's the fact that your action is an energy that propagates out into life. It's like a, like a signal that you are broadcasting. And then life takes that signal up and then reverberates it back to you. But it doesn't simply return it to you. It multiplies your signal with divine will before it hands it back to you. Do you understand? Life is not just the sum of the parts, the people, the animals, the plants, the things you see around you. Life is consciousness. And consciousness organizes itself. It has its own intention and will. Which is another way of saying that behind everything you see around you, there is a divine spirit moving. That things are as they are because this divine spirit wills it thus. From one perspective, there are many, many gods, all co-creating this reality. From another perspective, all of these gods, of course, are one. And these demigods together are all part of the one great being, the one great spirit. And the reason I delve now into this little theological discussion is that you need to be aware that life will not simply reflect your choices back to you like a, like a dumb machine or like a lifeless mirror. No. The actions that express intentions that are in alignment with universal will will be massively empowered by that universal will. A small action that aligns with universal will will be multiplied and amplified and will yield a great result. By contrast, a massive action that runs directly contrary to universal will will be dampened and attenuated and will return a very small result to you. Now please, do not understand what I say in a simplistic fashion. Please do not take this to mean that you can enact evil and very little negativity will come back to you. That's not what this means. If you enact evil, then it might very well be in accordance with the universal will that you are taught to choose differently. That you learn to be a good citizen of the universe. That you receive a massive reverberation from life so that you might powerfully feel the effects of your choices. Those that attain these understandings that I'm now sharing and then try to get clever, thinking they can manipulate the rules for the short-term benefit of their own ego persona and at the cost of the life around them. Always feel the sting of the law of karma. Then they bemoan their fate. Then they complain about karma. Then they say it's harsh and unfair. My friends, there's a very, very good reason your dear old Adamu is teaching you the six sacred steps in the very sequence that I am teaching them to you. Begin with acceptance. So that you are not choosing from a place of anger or fear or hatred or jealousy or greed or desire for enrichment of yourself over another. Or any of these kinds of negative motivations. Begin with acceptance. Then choose your intention very, very carefully. Be still. Listen to your heart. Align with the divine will within. And only then, when you have a really great choice that you can really align yourself with, only then should you begin to empower it with an action. Only then do you begin to broadcast your intention out into the world by doing. 
I hope you understand. Because this is powerful stuff. They say, children should not play with sharp knives and fire. Well, spiritual children should not play with the six sacred steps. Now, there is a fourth component to the law of action that I need to appraise you of. It is time. Do you know what time is? Science seemingly has no definition for it. But I will tell you what it is. It's the pause that occurs between cause and effect. So perhaps the law of action should be stated as follows. What you express into life is, in time, multiplied by universal will and then returned to you. Do you understand? I'm saying that the energy that you've put out will take some time to come back to you. And this, right here, is why you have probably not noticed the law of action. This is why you need to be told about it. If there was no gap at all, it would be as obvious to you as opening a faucet or switching on a light. You do not doubt that the action of opening a faucet causes water to flow, do you? You do not doubt that the action of turning on a switch on the wall causes a light bulb in the ceiling to glow, do you? There is no confusion or doubt because it is immediate. But think for a moment, how would it be if you opened a tap right now and nothing happened? Then you turned on a switch and also nothing happened. Then you did 20 other such things before, in a week's time, the water suddenly began to flow. Perhaps you had opened and closed the tap three times already before it began to flow. And then, after another week or two, the light bulb inexplicably began to glow. And to confuse matters further, between now and then, a number of doors had opened and shut and your motor vehicle had started up and the lawnmower did a lap around the garden and your neighbor's dog also bit you. You would have to be a great deal more observant than the average human being is to notice the causation between the first tap opening and the water eventually flowing. There would perhaps be some spiritual precept about taps and water that you may or may not even believe. And to further complicate matters, do you know that time is not the same for everyone? Yes, certainly, everyone has the same number of seconds in the day. This is true. But that's the illusory external reality that you are co-creating. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the gap between the causes that you personally instigate in life and the effects that come back to you into your awareness. Do you know about the densities of consciousness? Have you heard that you can raise your consciousness? Well, a being called eight, for whom I have the utmost respect, a being who is directly involved with the holding of the law of karma in this reality, has produced a clear and compelling description of the densities of consciousness that you can read and understand exactly what they are. And the reason you should read this is that it directly pertains to your experience of life. You see, the higher your density of consciousness, the shorter the gap between cause and effect for you. Eventually, the gap is so short that it is nearly immediate. Then you are what is called a magical being, because your will is then nearly instantly done. But you must be of very high consciousness for this to be so. Seventh density, to be exact. But the vast majority of all those upon planet Earth at this time or of third density. At this third density level of awareness, you can enact a choice today that can even come back to you in your next lifetime, or the one after that, or the one after that. When you have utterly and completely forgotten that you instigated that action, that's when it returns to you. And this is not a mistake. Neither is it a cruelty. This very effect, this very large gap between cause and effect, 
is the only way you can forget your own true creator nature and reside lifetime after lifetime in deep forgetting here and duality. It's the only way you can believe yourself to be a victim. It's the only way you can think fear to be a real and valid response to life. It's the only way you can co-create disastrous and painful outcomes for yourself. And beloved friend, I know many of you simply will not be able to hear this from me, but I tell you it is true. You actually wanted to be here to experience this. You wanted this deepest level of forgetting because it's only from this place of utter forgetting that you can create yourself anew. That you can rise, triumphant and magnificent, into a whole new creation of self. Which is what happens to the awakened, ascended souls that arise from duality. When you are ready to return, you will return transformed. You will return with vastly more than that which you departed with. It's a journey that every single returnee reports to be very challenging, but worth it over and over again. And when it is time, you will return. But what I wish you to understand is that the process of raising your consciousness is the process of shortening the gap between your causative action and the effect of that action returning to you. And as this gap shortens, so you become a more and more powerful creator being. In great part, this is because there is less chaos in your actions between the cause and the effect. Let me explain it like this. If you open and close the faucet ten times before the water flows, its flow might be very weak when it arrives in two weeks' time because of all the opening and closing, because of all the confusion between intention. Do you want it open or do you want it closed? You have not clearly and firmly offered life only one intent strengthened with one action. Many intents, many actions. Much chaos. By contrast, if you firmly open the faucet today and do nothing else, the water will gush forth from the tap when it arrives, perhaps tomorrow, quite strongly. As you raise your consciousness, so you reduce the gap. As you reduce the gap, so you empower the effect. As you reduce the gap and empower the effect, so you become far more powerfully aware that you are creating your reality. As you become conscious of your creator nature, so you become more mindful of your creations. As you become more mindful of your creations, so you create in a more orderly, purposeful way. And as you do this, so you align yourself ever more with divine will. As you align yourself with divine will, so you raise your consciousness. And as you raise your consciousness, so you reduce the gap between cause and effect. Do you see? A cycle begins. And that cycle leads you to be spiraling upwards into ever higher levels of consciousness, creating ever more powerfully. Beloved friend, the law of action is the engine room of the sacred steps. It's what drives creation in this reality. While you are here in separation, your actions are paramount. They are what you put out into the world. Yes, it is true. You can act without moving a muscle or saying a word. You can act in meditation or imagination. This is true. But do you know how to do this? There is perhaps a handful of people alive on the earth today that really know how to do this. People who have spent vast energy and attention training their minds. Such beings can act upon the world 
while sitting still. Are you one of these beings? No? Then act using your hands, using your body, your vocal cords, your pen, your computer keyboard. Act with action. And this brings me to the final point of our conversation on the law of action. Now that you understand the importance of action, now you might ask, yes, but what should I then do? The answer is to go back to your intention. What is the change you wish to see in your world? You will recall when I spoke to you about intention, I said, setting your intention is like putting a pin in the map. It's like saying, I'm going there. Well, your actions should be akin to getting up and taking a step in that direction. So check with your intention that you have set. Now ask yourself, what one thing can I do right now that takes me in the direction of the fulfillment of my intention? People often feel overwhelmed at this point. How can I do something that takes me to my desired outcome, they ask. Perhaps you are desperately ill and your intention is wellness. Or perhaps you are swamped in debt and your intention is abundance. Or perhaps you are all alone and your intention is to find your soulmate. Or whatever the case. At this point, perhaps it feels as if you are a thousand miles from your desired outcome. Perhaps you cannot even imagine how you could, in a hundred lifetimes, get to your desired goal. Well, that is perfectly okay. You don't have to get yourself to your goal. You only have to take one single step in that direction right now. So remind yourself of your intention. Repeat it to yourself until you feel it. Then check. What can you do right now towards that end? And please, let's not lie to ourselves here. If your intention is great physical well-being, you cannot say, I am going to eat a fudge sundae for my health. You know what leads to good health and what detracts from it. You must do something that is directly about the manifestation of your intention. One small step in the right direction. Perhaps you could choose to research good and healthy eating habits. And then perhaps you could choose to make something good and healthy to eat. There you have taken a small step. You are on the path. Now equally importantly, you must also cease taking steps in the opposite direction. It doesn't help to take a step forward and to promptly turn around and run three steps backwards. So be clear about what you are doing. Keep choosing actions that take you forwards towards your desired outcome. Keep letting go of choices that take you backwards, away from your desired outcome. My friends, this is not rocket science. And if you cannot think of a single thing that you could possibly do to move yourself in the right direction, then the first thing for you to do is to set some time aside to meditate to listen to your heart. And if that doesn't work, then you need input. Find a trusted person whose input you would value. Talk things over with them. Find something constructive, positive and specific that you can do that takes you towards your desired goal. Then do it. It is good if you can do something like this regularly. If it works out that you can do something like this daily, then that is good. But make sure you are taking concrete steps forward. And make sure you are declining to take counterproductive steps backwards. Do this iteratively and repetitively. Get into the habit and you will find yourself walking towards your desired outcome, step by step. Do this and the magic will begin to flow.
You will be enacting the law of action. You will be bringing the desired outcome towards yourself. Stay the course and you will see it happening. A journey of a thousand miles will magically foreshorten as universal will assists you and gives you wings. You will find yourself actually walking the energetic equivalent of perhaps a hundred miles if you act weakly. And if you act powerfully and purposefully and you raise your consciousness, you will need to walk perhaps a handful of miles only and you will find yourself magically arriving at your destination. Friends, when the universe conspires to bring your desires to you, you may truly expect the miraculous. And so, now you know how. And with that, you are already ready to do magic in your life. But it is possible to add to the magic. It's possible to empower it further. And these further empowerments, that, that further reduce what you need to do to do magic, are what constitutes the remaining sacred steps. And I look forward to sharing these with you in the next few editions of this Adamu Speaks series. Until then, I wish for you that you love what you do and that you do what you love. I am Adamu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization. And I've been speaking to you through Zingdad.